Welcome to Luminary Sounds. It's your girl, creative fanatic, K Don't Play. Shout out to my co-host, Junior Leto and Francois the Great. Unlike some of you guys, we have been following the social distancing rules and staying at home, but we're still trying to provide you guys with great quality content. So we're still pushing out these reviews and these interviews. And today, I have the pleasure of inter I mean, interviewing a very special person who goes by the name of Young Nova, aka Supernova. How you doing today? Doing good. Good. How's quarantine life for you? It's not Supernova though. No? Uh -huh. What? You just go by Young Nova? Uh huh. Okay, on the internet, I did my research. <laughs> it said AKA <laughs> Supernova. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why I said that though. It's a lot of other artists that be using my name. Huh. Yeah, and it's like one of those things that even with the name protected, I can't stop them at this level at least from using my name. Huh. Yeah, so it's irritating, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Scratch Supernova, just Young Nova. Young Nova. He was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. He's been in the game 13 years. And for Junior, shout out to Junior, he has 1.2K YouTube subscribers and his latest single... Blossom has 1.4k views already, and it's only been out two weeks, right? Two weeks, yeah. Two weeks. Um, before I go into my favorite songs, go ahead and tell the people a little bit about yourself as far as what got you into music, who inspires you, all that good stuff. Got you. Um, what got me into music actually was just like, I guess, therapy. Um, mm -hmm. I was in middle school when I started music, probably like the sixth or seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Like around 12 or 13, that's why I've been rapping for so long because I started real young. Mm -hmm. And um, just going through a lot at the time, like my grandma passed away, my dad was in jail, my mom was on drugs, and then I was in homeroom. And in homeroom in Override Middle School, we either had the um, choice of reading a book or writing a report or something like that. So I grabbed the paper and started writing. I knew the teacher couldn't tell the difference whether I was doing my work or not. Mm -hmm. So I started writing a song. And um, the song that I wrote was called this is the life I live, just detailing everything I was going through. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to share with nobody at the time, but one of my friends that used to always talk about other people, like one of those jokesters, he seen what I was doing and he peeked over my shoulders. Mm -hmm. He was like, oh, you writing a rap? And I kind of tried to hide it. I was like, no, I'm not writing a rap. And then he was like, yeah, when the bell ring, I'm going to make sure you rap that to everybody. And I'm thinking he just like playing around or something. But then when the bell rung for passing period, he jumped in front of me as soon as I walked out the door of the classroom and he was like, hey, everybody. And then, like, as soon as he said that, a whole bunch of people thought we were about to fight. So they, they gathered around. And then after they gathered around, he made me rap. And it was a lot, it was like a big circle around me. And I rapped it. And a lot of people was, I guess, it resonated with them. And that's pretty much and how, how old? I how, how old were you? I think I was like 12 or 13. 12. And at that time, at 12 or 13, did you say okay this is something that I want to do as a career did you take it serious because I know some <coughs> artists they'll say oh I've been in the game 20 plus years but when was the age that you're like no I need to take this serious and this is something that I want to do for the rest of my life um pretty much that day honestly when I seen like how it was therapy for me mm -hmm. but how it really connected with everybody else because I thought like I was going to get laughed at honestly but then when I looked up after rapping it, everybody was just pretty much shell-shocked and they all started shaking my hand. And it was like eighth graders coming up to me telling me if I ever needed anything, like, like let them know. So at that point, I pretty much knew that I was going to be doing it. You getting a call in the middle of your Yeah. Wait. <laughs> I pretty much knew I was going um, to do it. So yeah, that first rap, I uh, pretty much. Did you have the support from your family? The whole time, because I know, again, too, some people, music or being in the entertainment industry, a lot of people think, oh, it's not stable money, so they don't really support it as much as a person that will go grab a nine-to-five job. Did you have the support that you... Nah, initially, I didn't have no support. No. So, basically, when I started, I had to figure out a way to convince people to even listen to them. Yeah, listen to me. Like, mm -hmm. I used to try to rap to my family members. They didn't want to listen to me. <laughs> try to rap to friends. They didn't want to listen to me. And mm -hmm. basically, I had to convince my cousin. He was the first person in my family that listened to me to um, 
hear one of my raps by telling him he was in it. Mm -hmm. I told him I, I put him in the rap. Oh, of course. He's like, oh, yeah, let me listen. That's a good song. Yeah, he stopped doing what he was doing. He was like, let me hear that. Yeah, and I rapped it to him. He was like, oh, you can actually do this. Uh -huh. And I had him as a fan at, after that point. Mm -hmm. And then it was just pretty much like that my whole career, just trying to convince people to actually give, give me a chance. Uh -huh. Do you feel like now that you've been in the game 13 years, now everybody's supporting you because they see like one you're taking you took it serious um, all the way from 12 up until as, now. As far as family, that support came along the way, but as far as like financial support, really nobody's really going to like help you help you like that. You pretty exactly. much got to go and get it on your own. Um, and as far as support from friends, it's kind of like the same. Mm -hmm. They they will tell you they support you, mm -hmm. and some of them will do certain things, but it's a limit on what you know how far the support goes. Do you have a particular artist in the industry that inspires your sound? Nipsey, sure. Yeah. It was Nipsey. It was Nipsey, definitely. And what would you say has been the hardest part from when you started? leading up to now and has it gotten easier for you or is it still a struggle the hardest part in music was transitioning from just like doing it as a as a as a love like just having a passion for it and doing it as like like that to trying to figure out a way of making money with it actually making it a profession mm -hmm. that's the hardest part honestly in music and are you in a do you have a, a, a stable income with music now or are you um, having to do music and do Another well, lately I've been selling CDs, and that's been a pretty consistent. Like actual CDs? CDs? Yeah, CD, oh, CD. Yeah. People yeah. still buy CDs? Shit. <laughs> Shit. What? <laughs> Shit. It's funny because um, like one of the um, one of the homies that do music, he commented on one of my pictures. He's like, "I salute you for still selling CDs." Mm -hmm. He's like, "It's like a lost art, but." If they knew how much money I was making on a day to day basis with CDs, they Watch now, everybody, after this, y'all welcome. Y'all can go back to making CDs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, CDs can be real lucrative, and they still are, even though it is. Why something. is that, do you think? Because even like myself, I would have thought, like, I would not ever have thought, like, people were it's, still. Because it's, it's a hustle like any other hustle. Okay, okay. But when you got a passion for what you do, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're hustling what you have a passion for, mm -hmm. I think it, it, it goes over more better with people than if you just like hustling something you don't really care about. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm able to like have success with it. Okay, so you said that your the artist that you look to, up to is Nipsey, who in the industry is somebody that you're like, oh, okay, well, I want to work with in the future. Or have you worked with somebody that when you, were, when you first started, you were like, later in the game, I want to work with this one person. So, um, it's a funny story. Mm -hmm. One of the people... Are you texting me now? Yeah, one of, the oh. people, <laughs> one of the people that I wanted to work with and I actually met when I was younger was Glasses Malone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you heard him. Mm -hmm. like he's, he's real well known, at least in the underground scene of uh, rap. Mm -hmm. But um, he was actually on my block when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends told me to go up to him and rap. And I was like, who is this? I don't know who it is. He's like, you don't know who this is? Who Glasses Malone is? And I was like, nah. Mm -hmm. He's like, he that dude that got the um, song on the radio with Akon, Certified. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody in mm -hmm. the hood know I'm Certified. Yeah. He had that song. So I went up to him. Mm -hmm. He had a uh, Maybach Benz. And I was like, yo, let me rap to you. He's like, <laughs> you said it like that. Hey, yeah. yo, let me rap to you. I was you. bold. I rapped to, uh, actually, I rapped to Snoop Dogg, too. That's another story. I ended up rapping to Snoop, too. Just like that. I was like, let me. I have you been starstruck? No, nah, I, I always felt like this was something that's for me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So when I met celebrities, it was never like one of those things to where I felt like they're they're for me. Like yeah. I felt like a peer always. Mm -hmm. Even like now, I still feel that way, like a peer if anything. Mm -hmm. But I went up to him and I was like, um, "Let me rap to you." He's like, "All right, go ahead." So he gets all that to me. He's like, "You are, you are. I'm gonna get you in the studio in Long Beach. We, you know how that's been talking. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get you in the studio." <laughs> Long story short, nothing ever came of it. Fast forward probably like shit, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. I was at eighties listening party with Liko, mm -hmm. and he was he there. He was on the hike too, right? Huh? He was on the hike. Yeah, that yeah, day? yeah. Okay. And um, glasses Malone was in the listening party, and I walked up to him again. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, bro." Like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't know if you remember me, but um. That's exactly what I told him. I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but I rapped to you on the on, on the faux block, like, and you told me you was gonna. 
And you didn't. And he never did. It. He was like, take down my number. I took down his number, and I think like a week later, we got a song done. And that song, Let the Streets Eat. Okay. Yeah, that song, okay. Let the, either one or two. One, I mean, one of my favorite songs that of yours that I listened to was Places, and you were talking about affirmations and stuff like that. I was like, you don't hear a lot of artists talking that's, that's, about... That's not my joint. That's not? Oh. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. I, it was on you too. You mean Palace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Palace, 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 Yeah, palace. I was like, that's happening to do with palace. you. Yeah, you were yeah, talking about definitely. the law of attraction, yeah. and I was yep, like, that's, absolutely. that's deep, that's absolutely. good. Absolutely, Palace. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, okay. Now you can talk to us about your latest single, Blossom. Tell the people, like, does the name have a meaning behind it? Why did you choose Blossom to be the title of this single? So Blossom is basically like, I mean, on the surface of it, pretty much like is what the song talks mm -hmm. about. So when a flower goes from the point of, you know, when it's not ready or not right to mm -hmm. the point to where it's, it's, it's Blossom. Mm -hmm. And I basically equated that to my career to where it's like I wasn't ready when right. I first started to where you slowly start transitioning to a point to where you blossom and you you ready to really, you know, go forth in your mm -hmm. career or your undertaking or whatever you're trying to do. And I know you told me that you are working on your a new mixtape. What can the people expect in this mixtape as far as sound, any features that you're going to have on there? So for this one, I really didn't dig for features. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty, I have features on it, but you, they wouldn't know who the features are. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, they wouldn't know who the features are. Mm -hmm. And Blossom is actually the first single that we released for this project. And we still trying to figure out the title for the project, but the, the sound. What's your name of Blossom? I know. That would be dope. <laughs> the, but the sound of it is like, it's all over the place, honestly. Okay. So what people are going to get from it is just. That was yeah, it's, dip, it's, it's crazy. It's like different type of sounds. So it'll go from blossom to some whole other shit. Yeah. Is it almost done? Do you have a release date yet? It's, or? it's done. The release date was April 6th, but after all of this stuff with the coronavirus happened, mm -hmm. we pretty much decided it would be best to push it back because you can't really do any promo. promo. Exactly. You can't do any shows, can't do any release, um, release parties or anything. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't it wouldn't have any impact really. How many songs are going to be on this mixtape? I think close to 20, something like that. Yeah. And are you confident in in every single song? Yeah, yeah, most yeah. definitely. Every song that's that's going to make it is going to be good songs. Yeah. It's going to be good Blossom records. was good. As soon as I heard like the first, I want to say minute, I literally caught them that night and I was like, y'all need to go listen to the song. Appreciate that. One, and then two, I need to interview him. Because I remember on the hike, um, you had told me that you did music or whatever, and I kind of like peeped your face and I was like, okay, yeah, he's good. But that one, like it was something like something about it. I was like, yeah, I definitely would love to interview you before you like take off super <laughs> take yeah. off further um so now i'm gonna get into the fun part the relationship question so you already did tell me you are in a relationship how is it being in a committed relationship in the era that we live in of instagram i mean all of it all of life um, how is it it's, pros and cons I mean, it's, give it's, me the pros and cons it's, it's the pros of it is you got somebody you can trust, you can um, depend on. I mean, the, the cons of it is you with that person a lot, so you gonna, you gonna go through a lot of, you know, turbulence, so to speak, you feel me? If you with a person, anybody, it don't matter what the relationship is, even if you with your brother or sister every day, you gonna fight them eventually. Mm -hmm. So basically, <laughs> like, that's, that's the cons of it. When you around a person too long or too much, mm -hmm. you gonna fight that person. And in in like I said, the um, the pros of it is you got somebody you can trust and depend on. I guess. Is it hard? Like, do you have being in the music industry? Do you have girls all the time like sliding in the DMs that um, you gotta <laughs> weed off? Or I mean, being in the music industry, you gonna be around a lot of a lot of temptations for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so. I guess it. Yeah. And is your is partner, is she super, because I feel like I'm not in a relationship right now, but I feel like if I were, I would definitely need a man that would be confident within himself because, yeah, I'm going to be around attractive people. So 
um, I would hope that my partner is confident. Is yours like how is she with she, you? She cool. She like she don't trip on. I think the reason why it goes over so well with her is because when I met her, I told her this is what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like one of those things where. So she's been with you this whole. This whole, your whole yeah, this whole. That's dope. Not the whole thing, but a good portion of it. Mm -hmm. So when she met me, it wasn't like. And that's so rare nowadays to actually see a man like in a solid, committed relationship and happy like about it. Because you'll get some people like they're in relationships, but they lie about it for whatever the reason may be. But I relationships like committed relationships, I'm for it. Like so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely for it. Um, who's your celebrity kiss? I mean, crush. I don't know. Honestly, that question, I don't know, cause I never really, sat, I really, I never really sat down and thought about that. Okay, when you were a kid, but who was your celebrity? When I was a kid, I wouldn't even say I don't have one. I would just say it like this: You ever been asked a question that you couldn't think about it in that moment? Then when you got home, you like. Me. You know what I'm <laughs> It's like one of those, it's like, I can't think about it because I wasn't prepared to think about it. But it's probably one of those things, as soon as I get home, I'm like, oh, it's that person. I remember, like, Lisa, Lisa Ray was, like, uh, <laughs> like, was a, like, was a, uh, was one that I used to, um, that I used to, um, you know, be attracted to when I was watching her on TV. How? Um, who else? Damn I'm gonna think about it as soon as I leave. But I this, you. people ain't gonna know. Well, well, I'll tell Junior when he edits it. I'll tell him to type it in there. So be just like, think about it. Think about it I'll, be, I'll tell him to put it in the uh, put it in the notes. How old were you when you had your first kiss? Shoot, uh, I don't know. Probably like 12, 13, around that age. Oh my god, I was eighteen when I had my first 18? kiss. Yes. Mm -hmm. People laugh. That's that, good. I mean, that is, but in middle school, I used to cry because I had friends that was kissing. I'm like, bro, why am I not? Like, why I ain't got a kiss yet? Um, 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 um. What's the hardest part about being in a relationship in the industry? Uh, the hardest part about being in a relationship? Yeah. In the industry? Mm -hmm. For me, it's not really hard, honestly. No. Shit, it's not. I mean, y'all heard him. He said it's not hard. It would, so it would let's be. get it together. The reason, <laughs> the reason why is because I think at the end of the day, she knows she getting away. Uh -huh. It's gonna make it harder for me to try to accomplish what I'm trying to. So the best thing is pretty much to let me do what I'm doing. You know. That part. Everything else will be good. Yeah, because it's gonna get <laughs> done. Yes. It's gonna get done regardless. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any advice for any up and coming artists that either they just started or they're trying to get started what's um, what's one bit of advice for them getting started to Man, do it the biggest advice is write down goals that's that the part. biggest thing I can't I always um, reference this but I can't remember the exact phrase but it says Webster's definition of success is some shit. It was like basically you got it? Oh. It's uh, <laughs> Webster's definition of success is basically like um, accomplishments that you set high enough that you feel is satisfactory mm -hmm. that you act, that you go for basically. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing but it's no, something right. like that. Do you read? Oh well, this is a side question. So, something like that. Yeah, okay, I, I like Because I could kind of peep. I feel like you do read and even what you're talking about the law of attraction like a lot of people don't know about that mm -hmm. and when I heard you talking about that in the song I was like huh he reads. You went to the law of attraction all that? Yeah. That's dope. Like deep 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 into it but I can't I, I don't find a lot of people that I can actually like talk about it with because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. So when people talk about it I'm like oh that person is Smart person. That's the smart, <laughs> smart That's person. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sorry. That was a side note. Continue. Um, yeah. So my biggest, my biggest suggestion to an up and coming artist is make sure it's your passion first and foremost. Make sure it's your passion because it don't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. If you don't really have a passion for it, eventually it's gonna get your your um resolve is gonna be tested. Mm -hmm. And once it's tested, you are gonna fold straight up. Um. When when me and Liko went on tour out of country, mm -hmm. it was like the the schedule was so demanding that you have to have a love for it, right. because you will quickly find out I don't want to do this shit. Mm -hmm. Like the 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 more success you get in the industry, mm -hmm. the less time you have for everything else. And so it's basically like you gotta really appreciate when you can 
maneuver freely because mm -hmm. once you're in the industry your schedule is tight mm -hmm. like everything is everything is scheduled mm -hmm. we were waking up at five in the morning mm -hmm. and going to a radio interview you gotta be disciplined for that lifestyle super too. right after the radio interview we'll go to another radio interview right after that we'll go to a tv interview so we're on tv right after the radio mm -hmm. and after that we'll have a studio session and then mm -hmm. right after that we'll have like later on in the day or lunch in between then later on in the day we'll have a performance at like a club or something then have to do all that shit all over again so it's like you can you know, get burned out easy too quick so if you don't have a passion for it mm -hmm. you're gonna quit so my first suggestion is have a passion for it mm -hmm. and then after that write down goals like because mm -hmm. you're gonna be running like chasing your own tail if you don't have goals to um, achieve all right, well, thank you so much for your time. I was telling him for my viewers that don't know, this is my first time doing an interview by myself. Um, thank you and shout out to Junior and Francois the Great. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview. Make sure you guys subscribe and go ahead and tell the people where they can find you at. Junior will put all that stuff there. I'm on uh, YouTube under Young Nova or type in Young Nova Music. And Young Nova Music is actually across all of my social media. It's Young is spelled Y U N G. Young Nova Music. We out. That staying on that boat to make you feel like you gay. Yeah. I was trying to depart, but the flight was delayed. Uh -huh. You know, God timing always on the dot. Duh. I've been at it, gave it everything.